Good afternoon. Um, so I'm Heidi Searden. I think I'm super excited for the panel today because you all represent a really different perspective of what the challenges are that we face in the radiology workflow as it relates to ultrasound. So maybe to ground us, let's have each of you introduce the institution that you work for and a little bit of background on that to help us get the conversation going. So Dr. Fetzer, I'll start with you. Thank you. I'm in a large academic practice covering a, a big university health system as well as a big uh, community uh, safety net uh, system. And one of the biggest challenges we have is consistency and quality. Uh, we have a mixed fleet. Uh, we have very dedicated sonographers, but making sure that the same patient, whether they're coming into a, a, one of our university clinics or went into the county ER, are getting the same high quality ultrasound wherever the touch point is. So that's one of my big focuses, one of the things I'm hoping to talk about today. Great. Ashley, tell us a little more about RADNA. So my name is Ashley Rep. I'm the director of ultrasound. Um, so RADNET is, uh, has over 350 centers, um, over 9,000 employees. Um, California alone, I cover 150 centers and over 350 sonographers. Um, so it's quite large. Yes. And Lauren, St. Luke's. Hi, I'm Lauren Fazilari. I work for St. Luke's University Health Network. And we have ultrasound in 18 different sites, including 11 different hospitals. Our focus is standardization, and we're working on improved quality in kind of every aspect. Okay. So, Dr. Fetzer, from the radiologist's perspective, let's maybe start with a grounding on what you see are some of the major challenges from a clinical and operational workflow perspective. And then from there, we'll jump into how we're utilizing some of the digital solutions to help solve those. Yeah, so some of my challenges is, you know, there's always progress in medical imaging and ultrasound is no different. It's not a stagnant technology. We're always coming up with new technologies, new tools, new devices, uh, and new paradigms in how we're taking care of patients um, and new guidelines. And so we're always making changes to the way we're practicing ultrasound. And a lot of that now is driven by the technology itself, either new tools, new on-cart protocols, new presets. And so making sure that all of my equipment is uh, not only uh, operating optimally, but also consistently. Well, if I make a change today, I want all of my scanners to be imaging that way tomorrow. I don't wanna have to wait three days or three months for someone to go and touch and train everybody in the system to be doing what I wanna be doing right now. Okay. So, Ashley, I think this hits on something that RADNET has really tackled and you've tackled around you have a lot of different sonographers operating at different locations. That creates an opportunity for wide variability, but also how do you support them and how do you create that collaboration? And so you've been using Digital Expert Connect as a tool to do that. So I'd love for you to share how you've thought about that, how you see that being beneficial to the practice. Yeah, so Digital Expert has been a huge asset to our company with my, myself, the team. Um, I chose certain facilities that only had one sonographer, one room, or you know, inexperienced technologists, which it gave me the ability to do you know, hands-on training, kind of help them manipulate the probe, um, kind of go over their cases and kind of give them the support that they need when they're a brand new sonographer. Um, it has been truly impressive because then we've been seeing a, a decrease in our callbacks, um, especially for our OBs, infant hips. And as you know, with infant hips, they're very dynamic. So you have to be a very skilled sonographer. You could cause it to be shallow. You could cause it to be normal. So a great example is infant hips. So traditionally a sonographer, a new sonographer will take about 45 minutes, 40 minutes um, to perform the exam. They'll show the images to the radiologist. The radiologist will give them back feedback and then possibly at times bring them uh, back for more images. Um, but with digital expert, I have been able to cut it down to 20 minutes because then I'm able to discuss everything with the patient, um, the technologist, help them with the probe manipulation uh, review everything, and then also give that feeling of comfort for the patients. I think those are some great examples of how you're driving efficiency, you're driving consistency, the patient is seeing and feeling a difference in how they're able to interact with your team, and ultimately it's leading 
to an accelerated decision and an accelerated patient experience as well. So as we transition that, you've been on that journey. Lauren, you guys are a little earlier in the process, so you're in that implementation phase. What's that feel like? What are you hoping that Digital Expert Connect solves for you and for your team? So we're really hoping to reach those new sonographers and kind of help them with more exams. So another thing that we experience is that we have certain exams only being scheduled at certain locations with sonographers who are experienced and able to do the exam. So for us, we want to broaden that for the patient so that they can go to any one of our sites. So we're hoping to use Digital Expert as a training tool and as kind of like a second pair of eyes and kind of a backup. So if you have a question, instead of taking the time after the patient leaves, we can do it right then and there. And that leads to patient satisfaction too, because they're getting you know, better quality right then and there. They don't have to come back and take time off of work possibly. So overall, it's better quality and then better patient satisfaction. So thinking about that from the employee perspective, how do you help get more sonographers trained? We know the shortages, the, the new sonographers entering, they need help coming along in that space. Mm -hmm. So this opportunity to virtually collaborate as exams are being completed. Dr. Fetzer, how are you thinking about that? I think you're kind of early in that process as well of thinking about virtual collaboration. I think virtual connection to the scanner, to the room has multiple benefits. Uh, one benefit, it would be communicating with the patient themselves. So uh, there's a lot of remote re readers now, t teleradiology, and you know, organizations like the ACR are trying to push radiologists to still have face time with their patients. So I think one aspect of this is also being able to virtually communicate with the patient in the room, ask them questions, and maybe even give them results, right? I think patients would love that. But also giving support to the sonographer and being able to check real quality in real time you know, we still do phone checkout with our sonographers. And sometimes if it's a difficult exam or a new sonographer, you're having them call back two, three, four times because they're still not getting the image you want. If I can virtually connect and watch in real time and talk to them and say, no, 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 turn the probe, adjust this setting. Okay, take that picture, we're done. I think that would be a much more efficient workflow and, and, and help maintain quality and then provide some real time uh, training and education to the sonographer and communicate with the patient. So I think it has multiple uh, benefits for my workflow. So I think it sounds, it, I mean, it sounds like you're all tackling things from a similar perspective, but also ye yielding some really different results that are going to be exciting to see what the impact can be over time, especially as your teams get more comfortable with the technology. So when I think about digital workflow solutions, I think virtual collaboration is one pillar, but you hit on another pillar in your intro and that's really around, you have a lot of disparate sonographers. You also have a large fleet of systems, may or may not be the same manufacturer, may or may not be in the same location. So as we think about fleet management of the systems themselves, the protocols, there's a significant opportunity there for technology to help streamline that as well. So I would love for Lauren to share how St. Luke's has approached this um, and some of the impacts that you've seen from a fleet management and that philosophy. Yeah, so recently we did a complete fleet overhaul. So we purchased uh, 44 uh, E10s, so now they're all the same, but that's not enough for standardization. So for us, very sound is kind of our solution. So now we can upload presets from one machine and send it out to all of them. So for us, that was a game changer because now it, in real time, I can make a change and send it out to everyone. So the surprising point to that is not only did it satisfy our radiologists when we can make a change really quickly, it became a staff satisfier because now if they notice something, they're more involved. They say, hey, can you add this comment to the touch panel? And I can do that immediately and send it out. So for them, it's a huge satisfier because they feel like they're being a part of the change. They're feeling like it's perfect. They don't have to wait for us to drive miles and miles to get to each location and possibly have, you know, you upload the wrong version, a wrong USB. I mean, that's happened to all of us before. Or then something crashes and you're like, oh, geez. Um, another thing that's helped us with this is actually we've helped Biomed. So now when we get a new machine or if we're doing a software update, I can just send out the presets again and it saves them a lot of time too. Now they don't have to burn a disk or burn a USB. So it saves them time. We've also been able to kind of eliminate some random glitches that we've seen. So maybe a machine acted up for whatever reason. 
I resend out the presets and now it's like new again. So one of the other rumors I may have heard as well is that you used to do these updates once or twice a year because it was yes. just so costly, it was so time consuming, and it happened over the phase of a month. Mm -hmm. And then you had systems operating differently for an extended period of time. But how often are you doing those updates now? Yeah, so originally we were only doing them every now and then, and I'd collect things um, and say, oh, yeah, I know, and I'll get to that, you know, but now I can do them once a week if I had to. So um, in the beginning, we were doing it all the time because we'd notice the tiny little things and imperfections. Um, but now I would say we do it probably once every two weeks. And the reason for that is because we're constantly, you know, um, thinking of new things to add for exams or maybe tweaking a preset or something like that. So for us, we can, I can do it as often as I need to. So it's been really awesome for us. So Dr. Petzer, how are you thinking about that from a fleet management perspective? We heard from Lauren from a radiologist, or from a radiology administration. How do you think about it from the radiologist's perspective? So when I see a problem with an examination, uh, I have to think, is that a sonographer who's not following my protocol? Is that a problem with the on-cart protocol? Is that a machine that hasn't yet been touched by te my technical supervisors? And so I don't know who to, who to contact, who to complain to, right? So you know, if, if it can be near instantaneous, you know, we can d discuss a change in our operations committee, uh, approve a change to a protocol or preset and send it out. And then the next day I know, or I sh should know that everything's being done the same way, the new way by everybody. I think that would be a big satisfier for the radiologists because there's more consistency in the exams we're getting in the reading room. It's a better satisfier for the sonographers because they're not getting my finger pointing at them unnecessarily. Um, that never happens. That never sure. happens, no. Um, and uh, I think for my technical supervisors who currently have to drive all around the DFW Metroplex and touch scanners by hand still, that would be a huge satisfier to them um, and probably to even the, the hospital administration because they're not having to spend as much resources and time with biomed and technical supervisors and all these things, spending resources to get everything uh, up to snuff. So, you know, I would have a big impact for, for multiple components of my practice. So it sounds like staff satisfaction, quality control, a lot of time and, and just more capacity back in your system for you to focus in other areas. Um, so we've talked about virtual collaboration. We've talked about fleet management of a large scale of fleet ultrasounds. You know, the other part of this from a digital perspective is what happens after the exam is captured and structured reporting. And I think this is an area that ultrasound specifically really is challenged in the amount of data that's captured, the number of measurements, how does that get documented? So Lauren, St. Luke's has been on a journey around structured reporting for ultrasound for some time. So what's the digital solution and how has that impacted some of your organization? So we've been implementing um, Viewpoint. It's been working out really well. So we all know that the big issue with ultrasound is that standardization is difficult to achieve, right? Everybody has a different way of typing a comment, of um, describing a finding, of even scanning. So standardization is a big question mark with ultrasound. So you can you know, make your fleets the same, your presets the same, the protocols the same, but now they're using different language. So for us, Viewpoint solved that. So now all of our sonographers are using the same language, the same terminology. Um, this helps the radiologists so that they're not seeing different terminology that maybe they disagree with. It's all been pre-approved. Uh, we make sure that we're not diagnosing and kind of going out of our scope. And also it's helping our radiologists. They don't have to dictate physical numbers anymore. So they that's a huge satisfier for them. They're really happy to not have to nitpick and, you know, yeah, dictate each and every single measurement. Yeah. Um, I think this is one where we continue to see a lot of energy around what happens after the exam and then how does that data become accessible on the back side mm -hmm. for the overall continued patient management, but also how do you really accelerate to diagnosis and understand what's next in that care pathway. So we've hit on a few different areas, but I think the big question for each of you is, when you undertake a big change and you adopt new technology, the change management, the implementation process of that and how you sustain that over time really is the secret sauce. 
So for those folks that are here today, I'd like each of you to share with us a little bit around what advice would you give in your pre-planning and how you think about that adoption and what you think were maybe some lessons learned that you can help other people. So Ashley, I'd love to start with you. So someone once told me, you are as strong as your IT, um, which is <laughs> very true. Um, with uh, Digital Expert, though, um, where we implemented, it was, you know, getting everyone trained, getting everything implemented, um, making sure that they were using it. Because then once you put something into a facility, unfortunately, maybe they won't use it or it just kind of gets shoved in a closet. But I make sure that everyone's on every single day. Um, making sure that we're utilizing it, teaching, and then, um, you know, going over certain cases with them. Okay. Dr. Fetzer? You know, we're always changing. So change management is a, is a continuum and a constant process. Uh, as you alluded to, buy-in is a big component. So making sure everyone's aware and supportive of the changes, whether that's the uh, other radiology faculty helping me read ultrasound, whether it's uh, the sonographers, biomed, medical physics, IT, et cetera. Everyone has to be aware and have time to have input um, and be supportive of the project. Because we've had projects and rollouts that have stumbled uh, because we didn't uh, engage the right people in IT or the in network team, right? Um, and then as far as maintaining that change, um, keep you know having a, a, a feedback loop to receive comments, feedback, and having a strong uh, partnership with the various companies. So if you have a, a piece of software and you're implementing it, making sure you have a, a good uh, route of communication with a company that you trust, that is helpful, that is responsive, because we've had you know, other projects stumble because the, the vendor was um, non-responsive and uh, we couldn't solve our on-site uh, challenges and, and the project failed. So, you know, not only having on-site collaboration and on-site buy-in, but also having a good uh, company uh, representation and uh, networking and communication is also very, very important for us. So the team, the kind of expectations up front of who the key parties are that are critical to success and how you implement and getting buy-in early on. So Lauren, what would you add to that around how, how the team should think about these changes and adopting new digital solutions? So for us, I think the most important thing we've learned is communication is everything. And even if they're objective to change, um, the more you communicate and tell them the benefit, this is what it's going to do for you, you tend to get a better buy-in, as they were saying. So we communicate early on, at least a baseline, and then typically we roll it out in chunks. So we found, because we've made a lot of changes since the pandemic, like in pretty much every aspect of ultrasound. So for us, we decided to break it up in chunks. And what's been successful for us is we pick sort of a beta site, that that's our testing site. We try that it there, kind of run it through its paces for maybe a week or two, and then we move on to the next site. And so we kind of keep adding sites from there, and that's kind of how you implement it broader. So if you had even a hospital with multiple rooms, you could maybe start with one room and then work its way out. So that way it's not an overhaul change. And then I think just you know stressing the benefits, this is what it's gonna do for you. It's gonna save you time. It's gonna lead to better patient care because that's what we all want. So I think that telling them that is the best thing. And then I think Dr. Fetzer pointed out too, you have to communicate with the rest of the department. So you might not think that it's going to affect something, but it probably will. <laughs> so you should probably reach out and make the sure- The over index. Over yeah, index. exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, we're, we're kind of wrapping up our time here. So maybe a bit of a last question. So we've talked about digital solutions. I think the one other area around digital is AI. And that's a, a very hot topic. It means a lot of different things to, um, to different folks. But for each of you, I'd love to hear what you think is really exciting about how AI you think will impact the future of ultrasound. So Lauren, I'll start with you and then we'll work our way across. How's that? So for AI, for us, I think we're really excited to see where it can go as far as um, improving the quality on the machines. 
and helping out new sonographers. I think that's really a weakness overall in ultrasound is really helping that first year is really tough for sonographers. So I think anything we can do that first year to kind of help solidify their knowledge, their confidence, and kind of help them out is great. So for so me, the nice finger pointing that you that's was right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So for us, we want to use AI as a way to kind of help those new sonographers and kind of help point things out and maybe help them build their confidence. Okay, Ashley, what do you think? I'm excited to see how AI is going to transform everything, from you know helping them be quicker, be able to spend more time with patients. Um, being able to look for that pathology and spend more time. Dr. Kudzer? I think AI is going to affect every aspect of our work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, AI comes in multiple different buckets from um, order entry support. So AI can be making sure that the right patient is getting the right exam at the right time. It's so frustrating to set a, see a set of images and then see the order indication and what was ordered and performed is not answering the clinical question. And I think AI up front can help making you make sure that the patient's getting the right order um, and the right exam performed. On the back end of where I'm sitting in the reading room, AI can help with our um, on PACS efficiency, whether that's prioritizing uh, what I have to read based on the order indication, um, findings that the AI or the sonographer has flagged, whether or not the patient has a clinic visit coming up you know, that may be, need to be the, the next exam to be read. And I think an AI algorithm to prioritize your work lists is a, you know, fairly low hanging fruit. When you talk about just the ultrasound specific workflow, you know, you have both I, what I like to call um, vendor specific solutions and then kind of vendor neutral solutions. So I think the vendor specific solutions or some of, the, of, of what you alluded to would be image quality enhancements. And that could be running behind the scenes, just making your images better, yeah. you know, denoising your images, mm -hmm. making the images more consistent, providing real-time onboard uh, communication to the sonographer on how they could uh, adjust. You know, you, I see you are scanning a big patient. Maybe you should try a different transducer, right. or even making uh, some adjustments by itself, mm -hmm. right? Whether or not the sonographer is comfortable with that, I think a seasoned sonographer would take offense, but maybe some of the new sonographers would love it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of younger sonographers that I'm seeing, they want an app for that. Well, put one push button, you know, <laughs> take my image and make it beautiful. Um, they're, not, they're not dancing across the keyboards anymore like, like our seasoned sonographers are. Um, and then you have um, image uh, dete uh, lesion detection. Mm -hmm. So uh, finding things, you know, finding uh, the, the liver tumor, finding the kidney tumor, um, finding a specific anatomy. And then characterizing, like doing a contrast enhanced ultrasound, the AI analyzing the images and providing a diagnosis. So, I mean, there's all these tools that can um, really affect the immediate workflow. Some, I think, are gonna come from individual ultrasound manufacturers, like the stuff, the, work, the on cart workflow and image enhancements, I think, are gonna be mostly driven by the manufacturers. But then some of these, like lesion detection and characterization tools, that some of which are being presented here to our, at RSNA. Um, are those that could be incorporated uh, by our various manufacturers on cart or on packs. Um, and so I th think it behooves all of our ultrasound manufacturers to be kind of aware of that landscape. Yeah. And I think to have the biggest impact for ultrasound in general is to everyone collaborate and make sure that we're thinking of the bigger picture of the health of ultrasound in medicine in general um, and, and kind of delineate what do you want your specific machine to do well, but also, like a mixed fleet like mine, what tools do you want to incorporate that will make your, uh, your lesion characterization detect or detection process uh, vendor neutral or fleet wide? Right. So, you know, it's, it's, these are all, always things in the back of my mind when someone says AI. Um, it, it's presented like a, a, a one, one stop solution, but it's really. Just gonna, it's just going to, you're just going to plug that here, in piece and it's here, piece, work. Yeah. yeah. So, no, it, it's going to be sprinkled into every aspect of what we do in medicine. Um, and ultrasound is no different. And I think that is a nice kind of summary of the conversation today. It's more about how does it work into the overall workflow? It can't be this separate punch out over here and a separate punch out over here because then it's never going to get full adoption and it's going to add more steps for you and it's more to manage over time. So how do we think about that and building a solution as it comes forth? 
and recognizing that there's a lot of really great innovation that's going on other places and how can we adopt that as an ultrasound vendor and incorporate that as part of our solution. And that's certainly an area that, you know, we're looking and we're leaning into as it sits today. Well, I would love to thank each of you. I'm incredibly grateful for you sharing your insights. I'm honored to be here and spend this time with you. I know I learned a lot. I hope the team did as well. Um, you know, at our, at GE Healthcare, you know, our purpose is creating a world where healthcare has no limits. I think ultrasound and the innovations that we are doing there and the insights and the work that you're doing every day is how we help do that. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.